Hello everybody, this is Ryan Riccatelli with ASNews.net, and I've got Tony Lagosh from Slingshot. He's one of the designers, or he is the designer and a co-founder, and the guy has been around um, since forever shaping boards. Uh, been a wakeboard shaper, snowboard shaper, shaped windsurf boards, uh, and even surfboards. So, you know, Tony, why don't you say hello ev- to everyone and just introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about your background. Hi, everybody out there in pod world. Um, background. That's a tough one, Brian. You pretty much just said it. Um, jack of all trades, master of none, I guess. Well, and you're a humble guy. I mean, I, I've, I've known you for a, quite a long time, but I actually don't talk very much with you. But, I mean, you're the guy who's the real deal. You you do all the sports. You, you're a good rider. You have the respect from the riders. And, you know, um, you know, What's your background in terms of like you know as an as an athlete and and as a as a person who started shaping boards? How did how did all that happen and and um, how does that help your shapes? Well, I mean, basically, you know, I grew up in Utah and uh, we skied a ton and you know got into snowboarding at a really young age, you know, like in the late seventies, you know, like you know seventy seven. So that pretty much. Uh, just, you know, started the whole, you know, standing sideways and skated a lot as a kid and then rode motocross and then basically, you know, got into surfing at a pretty young age because I had friends that lived in California go visit and uh, learned how to surf and then got the windsurfing bug and, uh, you know, got the whole wind thing going and that's pretty much why I'm here, I guess. Well, you know, I was over at Top Hat's house over on Oahu, and he pulled out one of your surfboards. Um, or actually, it was a windsurf board, and he said he just used to love riding your boards. And, um, <laughs> you know, why don't you talk a little bit about your time shaping those kind of boards? Um, pretty much shaped all the way through, like, we started shaping them um, right out of high school, um, 78. Um, just started making boards. You couldn't actually buy one, so we just started building them in the garage, and um, and then the parents kicked us out of the garage because they were like, this is a mess. So we started Velocity Customs, me and my brother. And we kind of, just a little backyard, um, you know, windsurfing business. And um, actually, a good friend of mine, Dmitry Milovich, he was uh, the guy that started Winter Stick. And pretty much um, learned everything from him composite-wise. So he kind of got into this whole new direction as far as building boards you know back then it was clark foam that's what i started shaping but then actually got into uh building and we built hollow boards and uh sorrow you know full sandwich boards utah was actually a pretty cool place to build boards because it was all aerospace so we weren't really locked into the whole surf industry that's kind of a trip well and and basically that's the deal guys like tony has been in this game he's 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 the guy who's who's Pretty much, this is his lifestyle. He does it because he loves it, and that's kind of what has shaped Slingshot. And one person that we're really leaving out is your brother, um, Jeff. And why don't you talk a little bit about him? Um, Jeff's my younger brother. Um, year and a half um, younger than me. So basically, he was just always, you know, a step behind, always getting hammered, you know, <laughs> as far as like dragging him along and you know skiing, snowboarding, whatever, and. Really good skier. Um, got him into windsurfing, and he kind of he really got into the whole composite thing and the business side. And he's really just um, he pushed into it. Uh, got into you know distri- he did it with a distributor for uh, all kinds of windsurfing products, outside sports, and then basically we stole him when we launched uh, Slingshot, and that's how we basically launched it. The first time I ever heard of Slingshot, I was working at a shop in California, and it was a trainer kite, and I remember just seeing the graphics, and it was just so cool. It's like you had to have a Slingshot trainer kite, and then the next thing I knew, there was big kites, and I just started growing, and it was, it's just been a really cool uh, cool to see you, you guys, you know, grow Slingshot into what you have, and, you know, you were very instrumental in the early days of kiteboarding, designing kites and boards and all the such, and I know that you and Lou Wayman have uh, quite a close relationship, and 
Um, actually, I've, I remember he was staying with you at one time, and <laughs> I was leaving messages on your answering machine to try and get a hold of him. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, um, man, Lou, he's just a super rad guy, really uh, living in the future as far as back then. He was so out there as far as his writing, his style, what he really wanted the sport to be. And uh, it was just fun to work with him because he was really wanting to push the whole wake side, you know, the wake side. And I was coming from a wake wakeboard background a little bit, so I was kind of pushing him in that direction. And him and Elliot um, basically just kind of blew it up. So the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, and he, he speaks. I talked to him about a month ago, and he still just speaks so highly of you. And, um, you know, and that's the thing about Tony. He's, the guy, he's a real soft-spoken guy, but... The riders seem to speak for you. They all, every time that they talk about you, they say that you just are fun to work with and design and stuff. And and that's I think what makes this sport kind of you know fun is is when you when you have someone who is who's true to the true to the board sports like you've been um, involved in designing because I think that a lot of the riders really relate to it. So um, you know on another note, you know you're known for your your dogs uh, Zoe and Sheila. Why don't you talk about them? Oh, my crazy dogs. Well, I have two dogs. One is uh, Zoe, and she's an Australian Shepherd. Um, she's 14 years old. And I have another one, Sheila, who's a Border Collie, and she's 17 years old, if you can believe that, Ryan. Wow. And uh, she's still doing pretty good, actually. Um, she's deaf now, so she's basically learned all sign language. Being a Border Collie, it wasn't too hard. That's 119 years in dog years. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's wild. Well, that's that's awesome. And you know, I mean, it, I I read your br- your profile on you know slingshotkiteboarding dot com, and it, it's a really it's a really cool uh, profile. And they talk about you know your garage and and all the different things you've designed. And you know, you're so humble and even saying it. Oh, I, I the wakeboarding thing. I mean, you designed some really like breakthrough boards in the wakeboarding industry um for hyperlight and and there's another was it what's the other company that you designed for neptune or neptune i mean neptune was probably the you know the gto and the impala were kind of breakthrough boards i thought um but the darren shapiro pro for hyperlight was pretty much the first you know wakeboard that was compression molded which really um kind of launched the whole wakeboard thing so it was kind of cool to be involved with that with uh herb o'brien and you know, this is this obviously you've gone on and 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 you've started designing kites, and this is what everybody wants to listen to is about the kites. I get more interested in listening about you and your model airplanes that you're building. <laughs> you know, to me, like these talking to the designers or having a chance to just talk to you and ask you questions is kind of cool because you know I've seen a lot of the things that you've designed over the years, and like the fuel kite as like goes down as one of my favorite sea kites I've ever flown and. The only reason why I don't have one or don't ride it right now is because I don't have one. But, I mean, I seriously think that kite made me kite better. And I've heard a lot of people say that about your kites and uh, that you've designed. And, um, you know, this year, um, the link, you know, that's the that's the talk. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the link? Well, hmm, well, I guess we should probably talk about platform first. Yes, oh, that's true. That's, that's a <laughs> critical element of the link. Yeah, because, uh, you know, basically... Um, yeah, the link is, I guess, maybe we should back up and, you know, I know you know a little bit about motocross and it's kind of one of my passions, so it's kind of take a, a veer to the left and throw in a weird analogy. But, uh, so basically, if you look at platforms and kiteboarding, you have bow and you have, you know, sea kites, basically. Two platforms, right? No, you, if, if Ken Winter was here, he'd say we have hybrids. Well, and you have something in between, which is a hybrid. All right. I've always have to clarify that for Ken. Though. All right. Okay. Well, you do. I mean, you have, but you have two platforms that are. And if you throw in the motorcycle analogy, if you look at like, you know, the last five years of motocross, right? Basically, bikes went four stroke, right? True. And when they went four stroke, everybody's like, oh, I don't like them or this and that. But it, but now you pretty much you can't go to a race without a four stroke. All right. You just can't do it. Um, because they make such a broad power range, they're so powerful. They're, uh, you know, they're just an advantage on the track. Are they the most fun thing to ride? Maybe not, but they're, but they're pretty fun. So I look at four strokes as being, you know, the bow platform. All right, it's kind of the crossover. The analogy is, you know, this, you know, four stroke motorcycle, motocross bike would be a bow. But then I look at 
two-stroke motorcycles and what happened to them in the motorcycle world. And they're the freestyle guys, all the freestyle motocross guys. They all are still riding two-strokes, correct? True. So you get these guys riding, you know, the two-strokes and they're doing backflips and they're just pushing the sport to a completely, you know, insane level of, you know, you know, you can't even comprehend the stuff they do. If you watch it, you kind of get desensitized to it just because it's so gnarly. You just, and you see a bunch of it, and you're like, well, whatever. So then, so that's basically a sea kite, all right? And then right in the middle, you have this, like, kind of free ride category, which would be, you know, say an XR motorcycle. You know, a Honda would be an XR, just a fun bike that you would basically could ride. And, you know, if you're not a competitor and you're not... Um, you know, on the high-end uh, motorcycle guy, you would ride this bike that's really fun. Well, like the link kind of sits in this kind of fun category, like free ride category, but it's basically, it's kind of like taking the two-stroke motorcycle chassis and throwing a nice, you know, super usable motor in it. So it's just a really fun kite. Basically, it just, uh, it makes it fun to do stuff. It's um, real easy to... Uh, you know, try stuff without a lot of consequence. Yeah. So, you know, it'll make you a better kiteboarder. And so, I don't know, it's probably a weird analogy, but for guys out there in kite world, because they probably don't ride so much, but I just look at that sport kind of crossing over a little bit. And and so as far as platforms, yeah, you have this, you know, sea kite platform. You have this bow platform, which is really driving the market because kites have huge range. And then you have this kite right in the middle that's kind of maybe not the the range. It has more range than a sea kite, less range than a full bow kite, but really fun to fly. So it's basically what, what the link is. And the link is has this, the kite is kind of set up on a platform that you can ride it in a lot of different configurations and get a lot of different things out of it. Yeah, and, and you know, the, talk about, like, the platform and how you have choices between the platforms, et cetera. Well, four or five. the link is kind of set up four or five line for starters. So if you go into, say you go five line mode for a platform, what you get out of the link is you get a better feel at the bar, you get more um, direct input as far as like it makes your your bar feel like it's, you know, your strings are carbon fiber versus, you know, a little spongy. Um, so you get a better feel at the kite, at, at the bar, and you get basically... It's a pretty, it's probably a higher performance um, package for a kite. But if you go to the four four line side, you get convenience. You still have, you know, a lot of high performance feel out of it. And uh, so you can go back and forth. It's basically you're going to get 50% of the guys go, well, I don't want to ride five line because I don't want to rig the lines. You know, if one line is one more, one too many. You know, once you go to four, it's kind of hard to string that other fifth line out. And then, so it's basically a choice. If you want to get a little more performance out of the kite, you can go five line. If you want to um, have convenience, and uh, then you can run a four line. Yeah, and, and that opens up a lot of avenues for people, like, you know, and it opens the kite up to where it will, like, you can, and then it's kind of your, like, if you really look at some of the kites you've designed, like, um, not saying that this is like the machine, but you've you've developed a lot of different systems where like it, where it's it's almost like you got gears like um, like the machine you had that the line where you could pull it out and grab more power and 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 then you look at this where you've created where the, the platform where you can hook up four or five lines and and I mean that's kind of your style in a sense you're always like not trying to follow what everyone else is doing you're you're trying to you know charge your own path in a way and um, you know. Give us a little bit more in terms of like how the kite is designed. It's, it, you, it says it's a hybrid kite. Now, what makes it a hybrid kite in terms of the actual shape of the kite? Well, it's kind of a flatter profile kite, so it's kind of you know halfway. I would say halfway in between a bow and a sea kite. It's a swept you know swept LE kite, which means you know it's kind of has a lot of C characteristics, but it doesn't have you know the full sweep of a bow. It's kind of like it's a blend of both styles, basically. Um, yeah, it's kind of 
kind of flailing here. <laughs> no, that's all right. You know, I know that we're really putting you on the spot, and please don't feel that way. And I mean, I know that we're talking kite design, and and it's like this is live. So, you know, you know what we can do. What we'll do is why don't I why don't I switch to some questions that have been posted around in some of the okay. forums, and I think we'll probably answer some of these questions just through um, some of the comments. The, the first question I have is um, from a guy in from Kite Forum. It's what kind of riders is the link made for? Like who will enjoy it most and who is it not for? Okay. Well, the person that will probably enjoy the um, link the most is like an intermediate rider that wants to really start learning stuff, you know, that can actually go out. He can jump, he can ride, he, you know, he's, he can, you know, ride in a lot of different wind speeds and stuff, but he wants to kind of progress. The link is really nice because it'll actually it's really fun to fly it's a real high performance turning kite but it doesn't it basically slips through the turns a little bit so it doesn't doesn't generate that full fuel you know power through a turn so a beginner intermediate you know or even advanced rider wants to learn stuff like you know say you're going to go learn new kite loops and stuff you can do them without the consequence so you can do like you know you can be ripping along you can do back row kite loop you know and it's really fun to do it's not an aggressive back wheel kite loop. You know, it's not a Reuben Linton style, but it's pretty fun. So you basically can get your timing down, and you can learn all this stuff, and then you can maybe step up and take it to the, to the next level with a more aggressive kite. Well, and you know that that explains a lot. And there's, there, you know, there's the there, someone wanted to know about the what exactly is the newly redesigned split strut bolt-on technology. <laughs> that sounds serious, Tony. Yeah, that is serious. I, and I can see the motorcycle references. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, split strut basically was um, had a hinge point in the middle, and you know, split strut is basically attached to two points of the, at the front of the LE. So basically, sewing it all the way around the bottom of the um, strut and bolting it onto the LE, it just became a really solid structure, and it basically gives it a uh, kind of a cambered effect, which really helps the kite. Um, well, you know, there's another question here, and I don't even know if I should ask it to you. Is it, or ask it, you know, it says the link has new ergonomic nipples. <laughs> Do they really affect performance that much? Ergonomic nipples? <laughs> yeah, that, that one came straight from a forum, so we could we could pass over it. But I just thought that was I I thought I was missing something there. But uh, you know, we've got a guy Toby from Germany. He wants to know uh, what's the difference in flying the link four lines and bridles, or with the fifth line. Um, back to the four or five. So yep, <laughs> they're going to kind of switch all over the place. Yeah, and that's, you know, like I said, it's kind of, you know, the five line is basically you get a real direct feel. If you're a, kind of a more of a fuel or a five line sea kite rider, um, you would probably prefer it five line. It just has a kind of a nice solid feel to it. Um, and then when you go to four line, basically, because the pulley is moving back and forth on the on the bridle, you lose a little, you know, it's basically, you know, letting the kite pay out a little bit as far as, you know, sheet out. So it takes a lot of feel away from the bar. And so it's just a more of a smooth feel at the at the bar. But, you're, you know, it doesn't, your bar um, feel is not as direct So with the four line. Like I said, it comes down to really con- convenience. Like I ride both ways. I've been flying the kite both ways. And I prefer it five. But uh, I go out on a four line all the time, and a lot of times when I'm lazy, I'll just be like, yeah, I'll grab the four line version all the time and not have a problem with it as far as uh, which platform it's on. Which, which, pro, which um, platform is safer? That's, a, that's in this question here, too. Well, I would say the five line is probably the safest because you have a, one more redundant um, safety having a fifth attached to it. I just, you know, I have to ask you about the tailpipe, the tailpipe bridle belts too. <laughs> you can't, get, we can't tell that you love motocross. <laughs> <laughs> tailpipe bridle belt. Well, that's just basically a little webbing piece that comes off of this, the, the strut tailpipe um, that just keeps your bridle line from snagging into the strut corner. 
which is the reason why I mentioned that. That's a huge problem with some kites. I mean, I've I've actually been victim of that and watched my kite death spiral. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's that's great that you you're addressing that. Um, I think most kites on the market now have pretty much you have to <laughs> that detail on their kites. Um, another question we have, you know, this is this guy. Um, his name is Cat Canala. Uh, how many protos have you built before releasing a production kite of the Link? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say the link was probably, we were probably up in the mid-70s before we kind of got a final direction. And then we probably, we probably pushed it way past, you know, 120 kites for all the sizes. And it says, uh, will you provide us with realistic wind ranges (laughs) for the link? Because, you know, with the bows, obviously, we were hearing from 10 to 35. I mean, what are the? I mean, what are the actual wind ranges of the link kites? Well, it kind of comes down to, you know, that's that's the toughest one to answer because you tell one person, you know, this is, you know, say you have a 150 pound rider, and it just is, you know, really depends on his level and his ability. He can hang, you know, he can hold on to a certain size kite and a certain amount of wind, and so. You know, wind ranges are usually a little conservative, and then depending on your ability. But the link is kind of, it's not really designed to be overdriven. Um, it's not like, you know, say a boat, standard bow kite that has a real good top overdriven range. It's more designed around riding in its proper wind speed range. Um, it has really good low end, has really good mid range, and you can definitely ride it in some wind. But uh, you don't really need to overdrive it and just say, oh, I'm going to have one kite in my whole quiver. Well, in you know, one of the biggest questions is bar pressure. You know, um, what's what's your take on on like what's the bar pressure of this kite versus a standard bow kite? Really light, in fact. Um, probably it could be you could call it too light, or you know, or basically like when you fly the kite up and you're pulling it on the bar, you always like when I ride it, especially because I'm testing a lot of different kites and I'm we're really working on fuels a lot. You know, I jump on that kite, and I always feel like, oh, I need to, you know, readjust the back lines and give it some more tension to give it a little more, you know, sheet. And it just just has really light bar pressure. But if you want a little more bar pressure, it's got a little mini Y bridle on the back of the trailing edge. You can always swap that around. The bar pressure will go up a little bit, and it'll be a little more standard. Um, That's one thing about the link is I think what's going to happen with this kite is it's a perfect tinker kite for a lot of people that really want to, because it's the kite's platform is the kite kind of flies in all kinds of different configurations. We actually kind of designed it as a three line kite originally, <laughs> and we kind of evolved it from there. So people are going to start playing with the kite and going, "Well, you know, if I in the back line settings and the Y bridle has a huge effect of how the kite can work and different wind speeds and bar pressure and that." So what's going to happen, I think, is people are, after they get used to the kite and the, the high-end guys that are going to ride it, they're going to start messing with settings and they're going to ride it probably at a different setting that actually it's shipped at. Well, you know, let's start talking a little crazy talk. You know, you're a designer. You just started talking about three-line kites. Um, like, what is one of the most outrageous things you've ever designed? Oh, the one-line kite. The one-line kite. Did you, ki- did you actually kiteboard behind it? Oh, no, it's a gecko. <laughs> it's a gecko. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool looking in the sky, though, for sure. It does loops and... You know, and I'm sure it is, and that's what's so funny is, like, it, it, around here, you know, like, because it's so windy in Texas, it's like everybody has these stunt kites, and I watch these big old, like, entourage of people out there flying it, and I could just picture you in the middle with your gecko kite. <laughs> <laughs> A pretty good downwinder with a gecko if it's blowing, blowing 50. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, we have some people that just have some general questions um, from around the, you know, the the world, basically. They've, these are some questions from um, the UK, and it says, what's your main personality trait? Are you a sewing geek? Are you a kite surfer, an aeronautic gear geek, or a designer? And <laughs> I don't really, that's kind of a funny question, but um, I mean, what, 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 what kind of guy do you think, you, what, how do, what do you consider yourself? Oh, if I had to describe my personality, I would think I'm just probably a tinkerer. You know, I like to tinker around stuff, for sure. Um, but as far as sewing, you know, I'm not real fond of a sewing machine. I do my share of it. Um, but if I had to pick sewing versus something else, I would, you know, prefer, like, you know, working in foam and composites and stuff, something that's a little more, you know, solid-based. But, uh... 
Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Tony is a chill guy, guys. Like this is probably I'm probably putting him through one of the most uncomfortable things in his life right now. So I apologize, Tony, <laughs> for putting you on the spot. But you're doing great, man. Um, you know, let's get back. I, I there's all these questions that keep flooding me, and so I, I'm trying to answer everybody's questions. But um, this is an interesting one about fuels, which I said was one of my favorite kites. It's a, the this is Todd from Maryland. It says I love my 06 fuels, but have noticed they have a slightly less low end than my 04 fuels and my 05 that I've tried uh, and then he goes on to say what's the reason for this was it intentional or a trade off or maybe does the guy just need to learn how to tune his kite well it's kind of a combination of all that <laughs> basically you know the 06 fuel was you know we're going into a time of more and more deep power and more range so you know the fuel's got more top end and of course they suffered a little bit on the low end but you can't achieve more low end if you actually go back to like the, you know, the brake settings, you know, on the front attachment points. You can still achieve pretty good low end with the kite. But basically, the the profiles were, the draft settings were lowered, and you know, the kite was made to fly forward a little more. So, you know, it lost a quite a bit of low end, and it gained a ton of, you know, high end. So. That's pretty much it. Well, and then here's another question uh, that comes out of Germany. It says, um, are there are there any more machines in 2007? No machines in 2007. Really? What, and what's going to be the replacement? Uh, it'll probably be a big bow style kite, I would think. It'll probably be, we're going to probably have a, you know, our turbo, turbo 2, turbo diesel 2 will probably come out. and It'll probably be a big... You know, something that's a little more efficient, and it probably won't need to be so big. Well, and, and here's another interesting question: uh, cam battens. Um, someone wants to know, are they really needed? Um, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as far as um, really getting the front of the canopy to you know stay solid, it's a nice feature for sure. You know, is it a huge gain? I would say it's not a huge gain. Um, you know, for the high-end guys that really like to jump, it's it's pretty effective. For most riders, you know, maybe it's more of a hassle as far as, you know, rolling up your kite. So, like, for the back to the link, um, it has cam battens in it, but, you know, you can remove them if you wanted to pack your kite smaller. And, and it's not a huge performance gain as far as um, with or without. It's basically, I mean, it's... You get a performance gain on the top end and a better and better jumping capabilities. But as far as like convenience and rolling your kite up and stuff, that might outweigh the performance. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually uh, there's some groupies that have signed on to Lost Cherry and they wanted to know if you saw your slingshot kite in the new Urban Pipeline video. And I know that one comes. That's some spam. We're getting spammed. But <laughs> I actually one of your team riders, Zach Kleppy, was down here. And he's he's living with this band, and they've used him as the character in their in their new video. And the end shot is him cruising off with one of his um, one of his slingshot kites. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think he's seen it. I'm sorry. It. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll make sure to email him that one. Um, here's a good question, Scribbler from China. Um, how much of kite design is intuition, and how much is hard edged aerodynamics? Well, I would say it's kind of a it's more black magic at this point, as far as. You know, there's nothing really in in the, you know, aeronautical world that's actually flying around in the, in the hoop shape, you know. And it's now that we're getting more into uh, boat-style platforms, we're getting more into kites that are, that are more like paragliders. So there is, you know, some crossover there. Um, and then, as, but as far as the profiles and the, you know, the camber settings and stuff, I pretty much stick to kind of proven, you know, NACA style numbers. You know what? I just got a, a really interesting question from the lounge. It says, is a five-line link closer to an octane or a fuel? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> neither. <laughs> Lusa, it's neither, man. You're just going to have to go buy it and try it. <laughs> yeah, it kind of sits right in between. What I'm, it, like, this year, we had a big debate as far as, like, you know, what kites to have on the line. We're going to pretty much have two dominant kites for our line it's going to be our fuel and our link for the general line but I'm going to do a line of specialty kites which um, I'm going to still do a octane 
because I have some new octanes that are just insane. Um, so I'm going to do three sizes in, in the octane, and then we're also going to have the um, turbo diesel or the turbo two bow style kite. So if there's quite a bit of stuff coming down the tube. Um, the link kind of just, like I said, it kind of flows right in the middle of this, you know, hybrid, you know, kite. It's just a really fun kite to go out and, and ride. You know, it's, it's a great kite, and most people, I think, will enjoy just going out and um, spinning around on it. Well, and, and, you know, let's talk about the back kite. Um, I know that, you know, that's that's been something that's been on a, on a lot of people's radar. Um, why don't you give us a little info on it? What that kite? <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> you know, there's been sightings, and uh, don't mean to call you out, yeah. but <laughs> we can't talk about that. That's classified information. But That's there's super classified. There's this. Uh, you know, I'm just. It's basically just one of the prototypes that that uh, found itself on the web. I should probably just do a internet site on our on our um, website that just has all prototypes. You know, and just put them all on there so guys can just kind of view them and see them and. A lot of crazy stuff, and uh, there's actually some uh, really cool things going on with that kite, but uh, it's pretty much in early development stages for sure. That's like, you know, having a NASA, NASA you know, space uh, information, like, you know, I'm leaking it here, so I'm sorry if I put you on the spot, but this is a really funny question to me. It says, it's uh, from Kajorn from the UK. It says, what do you honestly think of kite form? Do you read it? And if so, do you take any notice of the mud and crap slinging? <laughs> <laughs> well, I pretty much don't have time to go on the forums and really check my chat. Every once in a while, I have a, somebody send me a link or an email from a friend or something that says, check this out, and they're pretty funny, but... Uh, you know, some people just have way too much time on their hands, and uh, I think it's probably good for people to get information, and uh, and it's a good community. You know, that's what kiteboarding kind of is. Is uh, you know, it's a community kind of it's kind of a social sport. You know, you go to the beach, people help you launch, land, and that's what's cool about kiteboarding. So I'm sure the forum's um, intent is for them to be, uh, you know, kind of that way. But I'm sure there's a ton of uh, Mud slinging on there. Oh, I've 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 suffered the wrath of of kite for him on many occasions. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have. I uh, got to take it with a grain of salt, is what I always say. Uh, you know, here's an interesting question from. It comes from our lounge. It says, "What exists in kiteboarding technology that is too dangerous for recreational use?" <laughs> That's an interesting question. A lot of my prototypes. <laughs> yeah. Tony's like the friend that you want to have down the street, and you want to say, hey, man, can I borrow that kite? And he's like, yeah, man, I souped it up. I bored the pistons. It's just like, you know, if you have your kites, I hear, are just like the your prototypes are really well-tuned. And uh, I can't imagine uh, what it would be like, actually, to be on the testing team, and like who, and which leads into, like, who's involved in all that? And, and what, what riders do you really get a lot of feedback from on your team? Well, I mean, I pretty much use the whole team for information. Um, each guy kind of has his own, you know, specialty. You know, you get Ben Wilson, who, you know, is really good pushing the, you know, whole new direction in waves and surf, and him, Martin Barry, Jeff Tobias, they're kind of pushing that direction. So they give me a lot of feedback from that side. And then you also have Ruben, who is, you know, just a super freak, you know, pushing it, you know, in a completely different direction. So basically, I just try to round those guys up and uh, you know get them on kites and and really listen to what they they want. Um, it's kind of out of the realm. It's hard to design a fuel. You know, I could design a kite, a fuel for myself. And go, this kite's great, but you know, Ruben will get on it and be like, yeah, it doesn't. You know, doesn't do it. You know, so he's definitely uh, pushing you know a whole new direction in the free ride. You know, or that high performance free ride category with moves and, you know, riding with power. So it's kind of what that kite's going to, you know, start doing, basically. He's going to drive the direction of the fuel. Um, like Ben and Martin, they've been flying lengths quite a bit in the surf, and they're pretty stoked with them. So um, that's pretty much it. You know, they, all the riders are, are just, they give me a ton of feedback. The main thing is to kind of filter it out and, and try to make them stuff they like. I just, you know what, my, my, my messenger's lighting up right now, and they're telling me to make you talk more about the Batwing, and <laughs> people <laughs> want to know about it. They, they're wondering if it's Ruben's kite or whose kite it is. 
And I'm telling you, like, there's a, my group of listeners, man. They know what's up. <laughs> they probably do. They do their homework. <laughs> well, right now the bat wing is just, it's not really a bat wing. It's just, uh, it's, there's actually there's like quite a few different versions of the bat kite. But, uh, like I said, it's pretty much in early development right now. Um, I'm learning a ton about it. Um, I don't think you'll see anything in the near future. Like, you know, like we're not going to release a new, you know, fuel um, bat wing. You know, next month or you're gonna have to get a link first. <laughs> link, link. It, we're, we're, you guys have. Perf- it sounds like you've really spent a lot of time on the link, and that's the kite that that everyone really needs to focus on. And you know, <laughs> well, I mean, the fuel. Like we, you know, we're coming out with our new fuel, and it's just you know a really insane kite. It's kind of pushing the whole Ruben direction and that riding style. Um, at the same time, you know, R and D just you know keeps moving forward. I mean, we're trying to some of the stuff we're working on is probably you know more like you know, 2008, 2009, who knows, you know, it's kind of... Well, and I don't want to overshadow the fuel, and so, you know, we haven't really even talked about that, like, what's new in the fuel this year, because, you know, I I mean, that's, obviously, there's a lot of fuel fans out there who who won't fly any other kites. Yeah, well, you know, the new 2007 fuel is basically, um, we're working through the final details with Ruben, but uh, it's going to be a real solid, you know, C-style kite that that has a ton of power. Basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring the line length down on the fuel a little bit, go to 20 meters, and have the kite generate a ton of kite power through the turn. You know, the thing with the new kites is, like, the link and, you know, you know all the bow kites and stuff, is basically they slip through the turns a ton, which makes them really fun to fly and uh, makes them fun to do kite loops and stuff, but there's no consequence. You know, there's no power behind them, or very little. So the fuel, on the other hand, is kind of is basically going down this this that. You Are you know, trying to tell me that my that my bow kite kite loops don't count because I push out on the bar? Oh, well, they definitely count. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they all count. That's the thing. But <laughs> as long as you're out there having fun. I know. Sometimes so we have serious. to. People get so serious about you know all these kites. Like, well, you know, the link's not going to jump like you know an octane or the. You know, or the you know, it's not going to jump like my feeler. It's not going to have the range. It's like you know, all these kites have magic. You know, it's kind of like so. You just have to pick the right one, and you know, the fuel is definitely pushing in a direction of that. You know, you know, two-stroke. You know, motorcycle that's kind of in the you know, you know, unwanted category, but it's also what all those freestyle guys want and uh so we're basically we're just tuning it up to the point of uh that you know it's going to be pretty insane you know here's an interesting question that comes straight out of the lounge um someone wants to know with the bow craze will will do you think you'll see the same demand for the sea kite um i think you're going to get a split you know it's kind of it depends it really depends on the riding direction it's kind of if kind of back to my motorcycle analogy motocross is like if freestyle motocross didn't come along the two-stroke would have died all right this is but true freestyle motocross is what you know you know jumping the two strokes is still really fun they have a special niche and that's what sea kites have right now is they have this niche as far as how they perform the kind of radius they do the kind of power they generate and uh and they're pretty simple kites as far as the structure of them um, you can make them really durable for those guys, and so it's just it's a solid platform for sure. You know, it might not be in fashion as far as you know with all the range and D power, but the guys that want to ride that kite, they don't want that anyway. Very true, and that's 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 a really well put too, because I think a lot of people don't realize that. I don't. I don't. I think sea kites will always have a place, or you know, they'll evolve to be called a hybrid kite. But I know, like a, a lot of the pro riders that I work with and shoot photos with, I mean, they're, I mean, they're very serious about the sea kites, and they they ride them for a reason because they work and um, they get them doing what they want to do. And I've watched a lot of them try and struggle with some of the the flat kites, and a lot of them can do it, do the same tricks, but they just don't have. It's not the same feel, and and it's kind of uh, your analogy of of four stroke two-stroke is a, is very very good yeah you can do a backflip on a 450 f you know but <laughs> four-stroke motorcycle but it's not as easy as doing it you know or it's not as it's not the same as doing it on it you know 
a 250 two stroke. So yeah, it just basically comes down to you know there's different platforms, there's different riding styles, and uh, they're all good. It's kind of you know you can look at skiing or whatever, but there's you know and snowboarding, there's a bunch of different riding styles, and that's what's kind of pushing the sport. You know there is a bigger category in the you know that you know hybrid you know middle of the ground you know type that's going to do a lot for the intermediate you know to advanced or even beginner rider and they can progress into that more advanced kite because of you know the sheer volume of people getting into the sport at that level but you also got to remember that the cool part of the sport is these new kids and the people that are riding at the top end so but it's all personal preference and it's all you know you shouldn't like poo poo everybody for one style for another style you know if the guy does a board off and he's having a blast who cares oh we got a girl in the lounge who wants to know if slingshot makes pink kites yes we do make pink kites there you go <laughs> we have a couple of different versions of pink though Hey, so you know, I, you know, <laughs> the pink link. You know, and, and uh, let's switch gears too, and let's talk about boards. Um, you know, Slingshot, you guys got a, a pretty a cool line of boards. Um, I really like that surfboard. Um, Zach down here, he 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 uses one, and so I've had a chance to really take a look up close on it. It's real clean, but you know, why don't you talk about the boards and and Doyle and uh, you know and and how that all goes down with Slingshot. Well, my main job is kind of is oversee all, you know, R and D. But uh, John Doyle is really um, does a really good job as far as the board, the board line. Um, he just works really hard at it, and uh, so we have a solid line of boards. And they're really fun, and uh, and then when you get into the surf side, um, I basically rounded up a friend of mine, Bill Johnson, to shape the um, the boards for. Our, you know, the surf category. I don't know if you know anything about Bill, but he's a really good shaper, pretty well respected in the surfing world. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, and, so yeah, so we just basically put together quite a pretty good line, and uh, I say John does a really good job, you know, works on the twin tips, and then, you know, we got Bill, you know, kind of working on, you know, just, you know, the surf style boards, and, um, pretty much it. Do you, have you really gotten into shaping at all? I mean, I know that you're, I mean, you've shaped some amazing, I mean, that's no understatement. You've shaped some breakthrough boards and, and, and wakeboarding and other, you know, and even kiteboarding, all these sports. I mean, why aren't you shaping any of these boards? Um, you know, I just kind of been so busy with kite stuff. I really don't have the time. And if I do have the time, it's usually I have to shape a, you know, a surfboard for a friend. And <laughs> they're like, they shape me a board. Aren't those always uh, fun when your friend always he's hitting you up saying, "Bro, I need a board." <laughs> you know, they shaped a bunch of uh, fishes. I've been making some pretty cool fishes, actually. You know, kind of my only little you know, release is uh, to get in the shaping room and actually mow, mow some foam and shape some surfboards. Well, and, so, and I still do it, and it's, but like I said, it's mainly for friends and uh, it's fun to do. You know, do, is in you're saying do you? You have a new site in Stevenson, and are do you have like a shaping bay there, or where do you where do you break away and and do this kind of stuff? Um, there's a place you've heard of Cascade Sailboards, right? Yes. There's actually Cascade Fiberglass now, but uh, um, basically all my shaping tools are there. It's kind of where I shaped out of for years, and so all my planer, all my tools, my templates, everything's there. So I can just run down in the evening and mow out a board anytime. So it's pretty good good deal and then as far as all of our shaping our prototyping and everything um we have a shaping studio or john does he has a he kind of has monster garage up at his house and uh talk about an impressive garage we should go into doyle's garage <laughs> be blown away you know he's got cnc mills and you know shaping machines and everything so he's pretty he's pretty happy well, you know what? Here's an interesting question. Right, you talked about the fuels, and the someone Lusa in the in the chat room here. He wants to know when they'll be out. The new fuels? Yep. Well, right now we're just basically they're waiting um, for production space. Basically, we can only build so many kites, and we have to kind of schedule them in. So you know, links are on the tables right now, and they're going through, and then the fuels will go into production. Um, you know, we'll probably do a small run. Um, probably. The, I would say at the end of August, maybe September, um, and then then they'll they'll find more room on the table for them and run them through. 
Well, you know what? I we got to wrap this up, but I want to give the lounge one last chance to la- ask your last questions. Um, and real quickly, there's like usually like a little delay, so I want to ask you a question. Um, let's talk about motorcycles, man. What kind of motorcycle do you ride? Well, Ryan, it's pretty embarrassing, but last fall I uh, bought a brand new 250F, which is a four-stroke Honda, <laughs> and I started up, rode around the parking lot, put it in my garage. Plan on riding it all winter, and it and it hasn't moved. <laughs> Pretty bad, huh? But yeah, but I hear you kite quite a bit, so that's a good. I mean, you yeah, I mean, kite isn't great. I mean, it's just it's been really a busy year, but uh, so yeah, I have a brand new motorcycle sitting there, you know. And I'm, and I'm interested actually to ask you, like, is it stock? Is it stock? Yeah, or did you just a burly stock? Oh wow, I would have expected it to be bored out to the teeth. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of the gas is on the right, and if you want to go faster, just pin it. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> They're so insane. It's been crazy. That's what a lot of my friends, they do the full motor mods, and it's pretty funny because, you know, you're going, well, all I have to do is just hold on to it, just hold it on a little longer. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have a couple other race bikes that I, I got a couple 125s that I held on to, and they're pretty, pretty popped up but you're a true biker I, I have a couple 125s that i just held on to i know not many of my friends just hold on to a couple 125s <laughs> <laughs> well i'll quit harassing you about motorcycles but real quickly one last question and we'll end on this and then i'll give you a chance to give some shouts out to whomever um here it is it's from the lo- lounge and it's it says you were originally reluct- reluctant to get into kiteboarding because of your custom windsurf boards talk a little bit about that um, well, it's pretty true. I actually got into kiteboarding because, um, you know, I was building custom windsurfing boards and people started coming, like Lou and Elliot and those guys were coming to, and I was building kiteboards for them and more and more guys, that, you know, Corey Riesler and um, all those guys are coming, I'd build them boards and the more boards I build, I figured, hey, you know, there, there got to a point where I didn't want to call them Lagosh boards, which was my sailboard label. Um, Kiteboards, so I just started calling them slingshots and, you know, build them for like a year and a half before, and they just basically started building more and more and more of them, so I jumped off the windsurfing bandwagon and onto kiteboarding. Well, and your life has changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kiteboarding will do that real quickly, too. On a personal note, actually, you just got engaged. And actually, I went to high school with your fiance, Heidi. Doss. Yes, you did. And she's an awesome girl, and you're a very lucky man. Cause man, she was she was that girl in in high school that everybody wanted but nobody got. Cause she was a, <laughs> she was a cool girl, man. <laughs> she was no she was not a she was not a lame chick. She was on the cool she was in the cool club. I was just lucky enough to know her, man. And look, you get to marry her. <laughs> yeah, she Congratulations, that girl. Yeah, is she kiting? You know, she's just kind of starting to. Well, I got her on a link, and I've been kind of getting her. She's she has a problem with uh, swimming in the water, so she's one of those girls out there with the full. She looks like a bug. She puts a helmet on, full life jacket, flare kit, you know, cell phone, you know, the whole deal. And but, a whistle. Uh, she's starting to she's starting to go for it. Well, you know what, man? That's probably a good thing. That means she's like she at least is like. You know, usually people balance each other, and I know you're on the other end riding your motorcycles and stuff, so that's good. I wish you guys the best for sure, um, and I want to give you a chance to uh, give a shout-out to, you know, your crew right now. Well, um, not sure who I can shout-out to. Everybody pretty much knows who they are. But, uh, <laughs> just want to say uh, thank you for all the people out there that support um, what we're doing, and uh, pretty much it. Well, like I said, man, thanks for coming on the show. I know I peppered you with a lot of questions. We've switched the format up here. It's live for me too, so I don't get to edit out my my you know idiot um, you know nervous um, chuckle. So <laughs> it's it's never it's it's an interesting dynamic. And hopefully, you know, in the next cup in the upcoming year, when you guys get more product, and I just want to catch up with you and see what's happening. Yep. Well, feel free to check in on that bat kite anytime. But <laughs> yeah, if, if you see some little kid that has blonde hair flying at really high altitudes on a bat kite 
Um, well, you know what it is. <laughs> sure, we'll do that. We'll put the put the, some of those kites on the forum so people can just uh, have a good look at them. But uh, it's, like I said, those are just prototypes, and but they're they're really fun to do. You need to put the gecko on the forum. The gecko is pretty top secret, though. <laughs> that thing's top secret. <laughs> well, all right, man. I'll let you That's get back. Power too. <laughs> uh, tell everybody there I said hello. Thanks to Mira and uh, for really helping us lock this down. Marina Chang. Paul Lang, everyone else. So, um, yeah, man, we'll talk to you soon. All right, Ryan, thanks again. All right. Uh, oh. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Okay, see ya.